Hello, my name is Randy Watashik. I am the Park and Rec Director for the City of Hartford's Park and Rec Department. I've been in my position for a year after taking over from Mike Herman, who was there for 38 and a half years. I previously worked in Hartford for 15 years as the program supervisor, and after four and a half years came back, and here I am. So today we're going to be doing an update on some park and recreation sites and activities. Uh, this is a yearly update that we do, and we're going to start off here at Candy Cane Park. Uh, last year, we received a $50,000 donation from the Nightingale family. Larry Nightingale was the former uh, street superintendent and city engineer for a while for the city of Hartford. Uh, he has passed away a number of years ago, and then recently his wife Gertrude had passed away. So his sons, Robert and John, each donated $25,000 uh, towards Candy Cane Park here. They lived, uh, they grew up in the neighborhood nearby, so this park is near and dear to their heart. So we took that money uh, and we purchased a new playground. It'll have a red and white theme, uh, similar to the candy cane theme we have going on here. Uh, we have that purchase, it's on order. We expect to have that in hand uh, late this year with the uh, install uh, weather, weather bearing. We hope to have that in yet this year as well. Uh, it'll have new swings, uh, slide structure, uh, as well as a bench and a new sign. And currently we have uh, the playground over here uh, with the swings, and then the play structure. Uh, these four amenities will all be coming out. Uh, we will have a new rocker to replace uh, the horse and the turtle. Uh, as I said, we'll have new swings, uh, one of which will be child and ADA accessible, uh, and then a new climbing apparatus. Uh, the sandbox, we will do some updates to, but we'd like to have that stay. Uh, we will replace the bench with a brand new bench. And then beyond the tree is normally our park sign. We'll bring in a park sign. Of course, we'll do a dedication to the Nightingale family as well. We're here at Westside Park on the west side of town. Uh, the main feature of our park is our baseball diamond. This is the only full-size baseball diamond in our park system. Uh, and this is the home to the Hartford varsity and JV teams, uh, as well as the Hartford Hawks of the Rock River League and the Hartford Select Baseball Club also utilizes as their home field. Uh, during the season, uh, we get help from the high school for maintaining the field, uh, the infield and extra cutting of the grass. Uh, some other amenities of the park you'll see is the new scoreboard that was put in within recent years uh, that was done by the high school. And then you can also see the banners along the outfield fence. Uh, this is a fundraising program run through the Hartford Park Rec Department for funds from the banners go back into the park for park improvements. Uh, some of the improvements we are currently working on are updated dugouts. Uh, currently the dugouts are in despair. Uh, we are working with uh, all groups mentioned, the high school, the baseball clubs and teams uh, as to what we would like to see done. Um, they're going to be made of partial concrete as well as wood. Uh, we'd like a dugout that should be able to see through to improve sight lines for guests and fans as they're watching games. And along with that project, we would like to install new uh, bullpen areas for the teams. Uh, that'll be beyond the dugouts. Um, this project could be anywhere from 60 to 160,000, depending on the design and features that uh, all parties involved will be able to go with and the finances they're able to donate. We're really proud of how this field is kept up. Again, it's not just our department that handles this. Uh, we get help from uh, the high school during their season, and then uh, the Hawks, as well as the baseball club, they help maintain the field during their seasons too. Uh, after their games, they do raking and they do raking before games as well. Uh, so they help out with the field prep. Um, some of the other improvements we're looking or some of the other advantages to, we talked about sight lines and fans before. Uh, we do get quite a bit of fan support for all the teams that play down here. Uh, there are plans for the future to put in more seating. Uh, the high school is leading that charge. Uh, when you do come down here, we do have concessions uh, at our pavilion behind the ball diamond. And you can get a hot dog, soda, and other amenities there, which also adds to the atmosphere. Uh, behind the dugout, or behind home plate, you will see our arborvitas uh, that act as a bat stop 
for the pitcher. Uh, this past fall, we lost our willow tree beyond center field. Uh, that acted as our batter's eye, which uh, was a struggle for uh, catchers, hitters, and umpires to try to pick up the ball this past season. Uh, so we're working on a plan to uh, put in a new batter's eye uh, beyond the uh, home of the Orioles sign. Uh, we'll get lights and distractions from the gas station that affect uh, all those at home plate. Uh, so we hope to have that up and ready in short order, uh, whatever that batter's eye will look like. We do have a few plans in mind. Hopefully that will come to fruition before next season. As we continue here at Westside Park, uh, beyond my left shoulder, you'll see uh, new, one of our newest playgrounds. Uh, this was installed uh, roughly five years ago, give or take. Uh, again, one of our newer playgrounds. Um, it is well attended. Uh, a lot of families are here. It's rare that there's a time when there aren't families here. Uh, the other reason we're at this location is uh, with pickleball being one of the fastest growing sports in the city, and one of the biggest hot topics and most asked questions we get at the Park Department is when are we going to get our own standing on pickleball? So this is something since I've been in my position that I've been focusing on researching and we had it as part of our park tour with our park and rec commission this summer. Uh, brought them to a number of locations. And at this time, uh, they've asked me to focus on this location here at Westside Park in the southwest corner of the park, the uh, corner of Grant and Sumner. We have the screen space that I'm standing in, uh, which is underutilized. Uh, it's an open green space that used to house a volleyball court back when I was a teenager. Uh, so we visited this site, uh, talked with the city engineer and the ER, and he was comfortably fit four standalone ports. Uh, we like this location because it has parking, parking lot, and it's free parking. Uh, we have bathroom facilities within the park with new well. We are now here at the Park and Rec Center. Uh, we're upstairs in the room that formerly housed Jazzercise. Our newest amenity is the Foresight Sports Golf Simulator. Uh, this will be advertised in our fall program guide uh, and will be open to the public momentarily. Um, so you don't, you don't pay per hole, you pay per time. Uh, so you're gonna rent it for an hour or two hours. Uh, on average, it takes one person one hour to play 18 holes. Uh, we have a list of 26 different courses you can choose from. Um, courses from around the country and around the world. Uh, we have British Open courses, we have US Open courses. Um, so this will be available in our program guide. Uh, you'll be able to make reservations online through our rec software just as you would for any other program. Uh, again, like I said, it takes about an hour to play 18 holes. If it's two people, you can plan on playing two hours. And again, if you get your 18 holes done in 90 minutes and you have a half hour left, you can continue to play. Uh, the room is yours for that time period. Uh, the cost for this will be $30 an hour per, uh, for a city resident, but just for the time. So if you're bringing in four people to play for an hour, it will still only be $30. Uh, we will have a non-resident fee of, of $40 an hour. Um, other than that, uh, we're very excited to have this within our facility. Um, within our room, we'll have a rack you can put your clubs on. Uh, we don't have it at this time, but we will have a putting green as well as a television. Um, and we encourage people to bring in their own music if they so choose as well. Another major project that's happening within the rec center is the reconstruction of our indoor pool. Uh, this year we had four major projects uh, scheduled. Uh, we had the uh, evaluation of our stairway up to the slide, the resurfacing of our slide, the resurfacing of the pool itself, and the replacement of the play feature. Uh, all these items were paid for by donations that came in from the Lutz Family Foundation as well as the Sigma Cass Corporation here in Hartford. Um, the 
these projects are taking place during our shutdown during the month of August. Uh, the play feature has already been installed, to which you can see, and work is being done on the shell of the pool uh, for resurfacing purposes. The study of the stairwell has already been done previous this year, uh, and that stairwell will be replaced next year during August's shutdown. The last item to this major renovation would be the refinishing of the slide itself, uh, where we'll come in, clean it, uh, polish it, wax it, and repair any chips that we have within the slide. And this will conclude our tour of our Park and Rec department and its facilities. I hope everybody enjoys what we have to offer. As you can see, we have a lot going on, a lot of changes happening, and a lot of changes will happen in the future. Come out and enjoy. We have something for everyone.